afternoon and welcome to IB There, our weekly live stream in which we connect the digital advertising ecosystem. I'm Carol Pierre Draves and I'm the EVP and Chief Marketing Officer here at the IAB. In today's session, we'll be discussing the mission behind both the IAB Inclusion Institute and the CanCan -Can Diversity Collective and our combined efforts to create and contribute to a more diverse, equitable and inclusive industry. As part of this, we provided a once in a lifetime opportunity for a young marketer who you're gonna hear from today to become a scholar and receive a week of unprecedented senior leadership exposure and on-site educational seminars at the Can Lions Festival of Creativity. With that said, today I'm thrilled to welcome to the show, Adrian Smith, Senior Vice President and Senior Partner, Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer at Fleischmann Hillard and founder of the Can Can Diversity Collective. And then also Adwa Ayesu, Influencer Marketing Manager, most recently Creator Growth Manager at Narrative and Scholar at Can Can Diversity Collective 2022 program. Welcome ladies. Hello, thank you. We're super hey. excited. Well, I'm super excited to be here, yes. Yay, awesome. So Adrian, you and I met a few years before you actually joined Fleischmann Hillard. Talk a little bit about your purview and your current role at Fleischmann. Sure. Um, you, you gave me all the titles, Senior Vice President, Senior Partner, Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer at Fleischmann Hillard. Um, and I have to say it's a great time to be at Fleischmann Hillard. You know, the mission of what the organization, um, it, it is one of the largest PR firms and their mission is to become the most inclusive agency in the world. So imagine stepping into a role as their Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer where their very core of who they are is about inclusion. And I think we're in such a powerful position as a communications organization because communicators and marketers, we set the tone for what consumers and just viewers in general, um, we set the tone, we set the messaging of how they perceive what their point of views and we help them formulate their thoughts on everything. So um, being a part of this organization after being uh, the first global director of inclusion and diversity at WPP um, is such an incredible and ex uh, exciting journey to be in this space and to have the passion work uh, that I do be um, as the founder of, uh, of the Can Can Diversity Collective. It all sort of wraps in and ties together. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I love the mission that you're saying you wanna be the most inclusive in the world. That is a big mission. Thank you. Uh, now, Adwa, so we met through the CanCan -Can Diversity Collective or CCDC as we call it as well. And that's where we, you and I were paired um, through our, our sponsorship. So you're currently in between successes as I like to call it. This is a great platform at IB there for you to, for you to give us a little bit about your, your expertise, your superpower. What do you want prospective companies to know about you and what you could bring to the table? Well, first off, I uh, always want to say thank you because I can't thank you enough. And, and I, AB, for just giving me the opportunity to go to hands. Um, and going on off of your, your question for me, uh, what I want companies to know is that I'm just very passionate about the creator economy and, and, and completely understand the concepts of how now that is the new wave of advertising and just the different way that you can interact and engage with creators in order to move your brand uh, forward and get it in front of as many eyes as possible. Uh, so for me, I've had a background in working in um, regular social media management, so understanding from our organic social media uh, brand, branding perspective of, of managing movie and TV show social accounts to then going on to um, traditional branded influencer marketing and doing branded content for companies such as Keurig or for L'Oreal. And then in the last position that I had, I was doing affiliate marketing. So working with uh, creators when they tell you to shop their link in the bio and just helping to support them in making um, their passion uh, something that's sustainable by them getting a kind of a piece of the pie with any of the recommendations that they give you. Uh, so for next opportunity, I'm, I'm looking for the chance to still work with creators and keep pushing forward um, and being a, a factor in the growing the creator economy in any way, shape or form, whether it be in traditional branded content, affiliate marketing, uh, or just in it, finding different ways to bridge the gap between consumers and brands by using influencers and content creators. 
That's awesome. And I think having that background, Adwa, is just going to put you at the right place at the right time. I mean, everyone knows the creator economy is just growing and growing. And now as we start looking at Web3 and the metaverse, I mean, creators really are the ones who are driving that content inside of those, those places. So it's fantastic that you have that background. I'm sure you're going to land. So if anyone's listening, and I hope you are, you heard it here first, please um, be on the lookout for Adwa. Uh, so great, thanks for that. So let's talk about the mission a little bit, as I said at the top, between both the IAB Inclusion Institute and the CCDC and how our partnership came to be. So for a little bit of history, in 2019, IAB launched the Inclusion Institute, and we did that in response to the growing demand to make the digital media ecosystem more diverse, inclusive, and equitable from all sides of the industry. And because we at the IAB like to say that we are the people who bring together everyone inside the big tent, we thought that this was the right thing for us to do. So one of the things we did as part of this is surveying the marketplace, and we identified three areas where we could step in and step up. The first was community, and that was really about how do we make the industry more diverse and inclusive, starting with attracting and retaining diverse talent. So what we did is we launched our student outreach and industry education programs with a special focus on HBCUs and also community colleges. We also launched an apprenticeship program to focus on talent. And this was really important because a lot of times when people look at resumes, they're just looking at experience. And we wanted to focus on talent with potential, right? And so what we did is we worked with a number of different companies to try and fill those really hard to fill roles, things like data analytics and ad operations. And that's really been helpful for a number of companies. The second pillar that we have is called workforce and workplace. And that's where we're focusing on making our own companies more diverse, inclusive, and equitable. At IAB, we have a number of different talent councils. So, um, or I should say a number of different councils. And what we did is we created a talent development council. And this was specifically for HR leaders where they can meet monthly and discuss issues and best practices around attracting and retaining talent. And recently in partnership with Meta, we launched a free inclusive leadership program. So leaders at any different level could understand what it means to be an inclusive leader. And then finally, our third pillar is devoted to supporting minority media and diverse content. We've utilized our marketplace events. So things like the new fronts and the podcast subfronts, these are great places where we have stages. We wanted to use that to give a platform to diverse voices and content from minority media properties to really be seen in the industry. So when I think about the IAB Inclusion Institute's community pillar, which is really about attracting and retaining diverse talent, the idea of partnering with the CanCan -Can Diversity Collective made sense. As Adrian, you started this program that enabled diverse up and coming talent to gain what was otherwise unattainable experiences at the Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity. So I think I'd like to turn it over to you, Adrian, so we can hear an overview on CCDC and your mission. Sure. And, you know, again, thank you for the partnership. It's one that I always say organizations, they have the PR and they have the talk, but do they practice what they talk about? Right. So we want to keep and continue to combine the PR that organizations put out with the practice that they say. And I think we've laughed about this and say we want to help people stop talking about it and be about it. Right. That's our motto. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Um, and I think that's what really happened with the formation of the Can Can Diversity Collective. Um, and I'll try to be as succinct as possible, but it's such a long story. I always get super passionate about it when I tell the story. But, you know, I went to Can for the first time in 2017 as a voyeur, really just to explore, to see what was happening. A friend of mine was going and I tagged along on her trip. I didn't have the pass, which, as you know, costs, you know, five figure, four figure. A um, lot of money. <laughs> it costs a lot of money. Um, so that's one of those kind of, um, you know, exclusive things, you know, that we talk about that keeps people um, from coming if they don't have the financial wherewithal to attend or the corporation to support them. But when I was there, you know, let me just say it was one of the most inspirational and inspiring events that I'd ever attended. 16,000, you know, people attend this activation on a really good year. Um, but on this particular year, out of the 16,000, only 200 looked like me, right? And those 200 yep. were primarily the entertainers that were there or maybe, you know, some star and some of the workers, like that was the bulk mm -hmm. of the 200 and, you know, some of us that were there, 
um, attending. But if you closed your eyes and you walked down the corset and you just listened to the music and the energy, you would think, oh, yes, people that look like me are represented. But when you woke up and saw people open your eyes and saw people dancing off beat, you're like, ah, not this, <laughs> not that case. So, um, but there was a lot of talk. How mm -hmm. can we be more inclusive? How can we make can lions a place where everyone can feel like they belong? And I literally thought it was a trick question. So mm -hmm. I just committed at that time in the small way that I could of bringing more people to the festival, generating awareness. Um, for people who look like me, because I had been in the industry for many years and had not known about the Can Lines International Festival of Creativity. Most you people and think it's both. Yeah. Right. You Those people both. Think I did it. not know about it for a long time. And I had that same experience exactly. that you had too. I was sort of there and kind of going, I don't really know right. anyone. And I felt like I was looking for like my my tribe, my people who were kind of like walking. <laughs> exactly. And I didn't have that. Exactly. Yeah. And we started by, you know, bringing people that, you know, the program that you're attached to now, the Diversity Collective for the Scholars and the Ambassadors, we started with bringing five young people to the festival. And so that was really the foundation. They showed up and showed out, um, you know, and created the energy and buzz for us to be able to bring more people like them to the festival. That's great. And so you said you were there in the beginning. So what did you do to maximize your time while you were there in the very beginning? I, I, I mean, you know, so there, you know, yeah. there's some tricks to the trade when you go to this festival. So if you carry your badge, you know, that four figure badge, that very expensive badge, you have access to almost everything at the festival. Um, but the beauty of Can Lions is we have these fringe events that go down the palais and the fringe events include like the big boys, like Meta at the time they were called Facebook, Spotify. They have all of these large organizations down the corset that have programming, um, organizations like the Female Quotient, they have events, you know, in various hotels, large mm -hmm. agencies participate, holding companies. Everyone has, you know, these spaces for thought leadership to take place. And sometimes you can go and just sign in. And the fact that, that you're there, they figure, come on in, you know, they're not going to be as exclusive to not allow you to come in, just sign your name, your company and give an email yeah. address. Um, and you're able to go in and listen to everything from technology conversations, advertising, marketing, creative, anything that's in this space you have access to. So that first year, I literally, oh, let me stop. There's a Yacht Row. You have to add in Yacht Row. <laughs> yes, there is. Yacht Talk about row. exclusivity. Yachts. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, you, you get to go on these yachts, they're parties, but the same thing happens with the thought leadership. And, you know, I was actually on a yacht at the time and I heard some Black leaders talk about how exclusive this space was and how they wish they had seen more people that look like us there and how it was sort of lonely at the top. And I was like, wow, you know, that's a terrible message for young people to hear that as they ascend in the ranks that it becomes lonely for them. So I wanted to be able to, again, create a space where we had access, people could see what was going on, feel the energy. Um, there's so many incredible people there that you will end up talking to CEOs of major corporations with no appointment, right? Just in general, the way the conversation flow and the co connections that you have, and the fact that you're even there, there are no barriers. There are no like walls up of I'm the CEO of this company, so you can't talk to me. It's just like, hey, how you doing? Where are you from? What do you do? Let's talk. Let's, you know, what, yes. what inspires you? That's really sort of the crux of the conversation when you're there and what happens. Yeah. So, that was kind of, that was my year one and I was hooked from there. Yeah, it, it really is. It's almost like you're having a completely different conversation with people when you're there because it's, it's, yeah. it's unlike anything. Everyone is walking down the street and you see every single person that you need to meet or want to meet, want to meet to do business with is there at Can Lions. It's amazing. So, all right. So that was your inspiration. It was sort of like, let's stop talking about it. Don't, don't um, let's be about it. Not so, just talk about it. So how, like, so that was your inspiration, but how did you actually get it started? Like, this is a yeah. big, big undertaking. I mean, it must yeah. have, you know, you're one woman. It must have taken like a village of people to kind of erect what you wanted to create. A village and not a village. It takes mm -hmm. passion and yeah. you got to be willing to take a risk and say, you know, excuse my language, F it. I'm just going to do it, right? Like, let me create yeah. this space and, and go for it. So, and the other thing I like to tell um, young people 
about this that I find, you know, in hindsight, maybe it could be an inspirational story, but I wasn't working for an organization at the time that I started the Can Can Diversity Collective. I call myself a rogue agent. I was working by myself, you know, I was consulting, I was working on various projects. So technically I didn't have a job when I started it. So it wasn't Adrian at Fleischman Hiller or Adrian at um, WPP. It was just Adrian C. Smith. That's who it was starting this organization. And I, um, the good thing, and, you know, I'll encourage Ottawa to do the same thing is bank up that human capital that you have, people that you've known from different places in your life, relationships that you've established, keep them close, stay in contact some kind of way, have a big impact when you meet them. But those are the people who come and support you when you have a good idea that people can believe in. And literally, I just talked to some folks from FCB, TV1, Google, and BBDO that I had relationships with in, in the past. And they all agreed to sponsor five young people that we took to Cannes that first year. I mean, the the process was, you know, such an impassioned one, I think, after I shared the story about the first year that I've gone, um, that, you know, she she always like makes me cry when I think of it. Vita Harris, who worked at FCB, I don't know if anybody knows her, but she's uh-huh. amazing. She believed in the program so much or what I was trying to do in the mission that she said, Mm -hmm. if I don't get my company to sponsor, and she worked for FCB at the time, she said, I'll write you a personal check. So it's like one of those moments that, you know, somebody's willing to come out of their own pocket to support this mission, then you have to keep going. So I, you know, was was able to, again, get BBDO, um, Google and TV one to support and the rest is history from there. And the the key was the young people who participated. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to get them there, but what do they do when they get there? And I I said it before, I'll keep saying it. They showed up and showed out. And one of the, um, in a random conversation with some of the uh, deans of the academies, because that's what they, some of them will go to academies and some of them will just be general ambassadors. We're just super excited about these young people that I had invited and they, or they didn't know at the time, but they were just telling a, a story about, how incredible this year was and the conversation and the trajectory had just shifted. And even the, um, and the deans were thinking about how could they change the curriculum? What could they do because of these young people? And I said, well, who are these incredible people they're talking about? And they named two of the girls that I brought, Jenna and Alex. And I was just like floored and said, those are my girls. Those are my people. And, you know, once talking to them, the gratitude that they had and the impact that being there had on them was that extra nudge that pushed me because one of the young ladies said, without this program, I never would have known that I could compete on an international level or that I could live anywhere else outside of the U.S. So I was at that point, I'm done. I'm like, I have to keep doing this program again. I have to keep inspiring other young people to just give them access and opportunity to things that they could have never dreamed of before. That's amazing. And that's a really big, proud moment, I'm sure, for you, just to feel like you personally have made a difference in someone's life. There's nothing like that, nothing like that at all. Um, And speaking of someone, we've got Adwa here. So um, again, Adrian, thanks for creating this program. We were really excited um, at the IAB to be able to take the Inclusion Institute, and we were honored and thrilled to be able to sponsor Adwa, your attendance, as a CCD scholar at the um, Ken Lyons Festival of Creativity. So I want to hear from you specifically, you know, talk to us a little bit about the program from your point of view. Like, how did you even discover can can diversity collective and and walk us through the entire process of of and, you know, applying for it being selected and then actually arriving in can france well for me i feel like it, it all in a way it, it was meant to be because the way i found out about the program was because i went to a panel discussion um, and one of the panelists I knew had done an, another program that I was familiar with. So when they asked the audience to ask questions to the panelists, I asked that particular panelist um, that I know that you've done a, a program that's for advertising and for uh, young people in advertising, do you, can you recommend any more? And she spoke about this specific one. And then as soon as she spoke about it, I went on you know, social media, I went on the internet, I looked it up um, and there was, in my opinion, I feel like there would be no other way for me to have found the program besides that moment and just asking that question. 
Uh, and then that was in 20, 2019. So then I was obviously ready to and prepared to apply for the, the next year, but then COVID happened. Yeah. So that put it on pause for two years. Um, mm -hmm. But I was always checking in. Uh, Adrian was putting on virtual events and I uh, decided to attend them. I actually reached out to Adrian to, if she, you know, give her time to speak to me one-on-one -on -one, and she was so just willing to do so, which is one thing that really I, I felt made me know that I wanted to be a part of anything that she was doing. Just the fact that she, I know she's busy, she's doing a lot of things and she was willing to give me that, those 15, 20 minutes just to speak to me a prospective applicant to you know allow me to ask her questions on what she's looking for and what's the best way for me to set up my application in order to better my chances of getting picked. So when the time did come around um, to actually apply for this year, honestly, I'll tell you, I was very nervous I, because in my mind, I thought the main people who were going to get into the program, I even like Googled other applications and they had some on YouTube, they had animations, they had all these uh, editing and all of these things. And I'm, I'm someone who's more of strategy or kind of more on the analytical side, but has like, but not necessarily on the creative of being able to do things like photo editing or um, art direction, things of that nature. So in my mind, I already psyched myself out thinking, well, those people are probably the ones that they're, they're looking for, um, but I'm just going to try. I'm going to do the thing that I felt was my selling point was uh, my ability to create community or really my deep interest in community, uh, which is why I'm very into influencers and creators because their whole brand is the community that they build online. So mm -hmm. during the pandemic, I was doing different things. I was hosting virtual events. I made a, a virtual book club. I, I was just doing a million different things. You were um, active. <laughs> yeah. So I just thought, lean into what you're good at. Don't think about the things that you feel like you're lacking in. So <clears throat> in a sense of like, uh, blossoming where you planted and kind of just flourishing those and, and showcasing all of the things that I feel I'm, I was uh, strong in and then just adding a little humor as well because I wanted to show my personality in my application. And then a couple of months later, I got the email. Obviously, this was, I applied during the time when I was already in my job. And then by the time I, and then uh, a couple of months later when I got the, the email saying that I was, um, accepted into the program that was after I left my position. So it was very, just a great natural next step for me. And I was so excited. And I, I honestly just couldn't even believe I was getting that opportunity, that chance to, to do what I was um, going to later find out, be able to, it, it was beyond my wildest dreams of, of what I thought Kansas was going to be. And even getting to speak to you um, as well here to you reaching out and wanting to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation also helped me and, and and kind of make me feel more comfortable and more that I was being uh, supported through my journey to Cannes. Oh, that's fabulous. Thank you for that. Uh, we, I just loved having you as our scholar. It, it just meant a lot to us and to the ability or the opportunity to be able to connect you to all of our member companies like you know, Meta and Snap and Twitter and all those different folks and XSM Media um, was really, um, a wonderful thing to do it was kind of like what I was saying before to um, Adrian. It's just like that feeling to be able to literally make a difference in someone's life was really important for for me personally, but also to be able to do this through Ivy was was fabulous. But um, I know that you met a lot of really amazing people there too. So I wanted to get into a little bit of that to you know give people an understanding of again what it's like to be at Can Line and around such people that are so inspirational and people that you want to meet. So I know that you you had the opportunity to meet people like Bazama St. John and Shona Alexandra, uh, or Alexander, I should say. What was that like? It was amazing. I actually were, was in contact with them both virtually during the pandemic. Um, Bozama was a fluke of me requesting to be on her IG Live and she picked me because my name is traditionally a Ghanaian name and she's also from Ghana. So mm. from there, we've had some Zoom calls on that um, IG Live, I decided to just kind of ask her like, hey, can I have a 15 minute call with you? And she she did it and we were uh, in contact having little 15, 20 minute calls every three months or so. So the first time I actually got to see her in person was at Cannes and that was that was a great full circle moment of being able to, to have the opportunity. And with Shauna, same thing. She had posted um, on LinkedIn having office hours um, to help like young 
uh, people who wanted to get into marketing. Um, and that was a while ago. That was probably 2018 was the first time I, 2018 or 2019 was probably the first time I had that virtual call with her. And then we've also were keeping in contact as well during the pandemic. So, and she lives in New York City as well, but the first time I was able to actually see her was um, in Cannes. So I thought that was interesting. And it was just, it just really showed that you had the opportunity to meet people who in normal circumstances, kind of what um, you both are saying about not having to make an appointment or it, you can just walk up or have that face-to-face -face conversation because a lot of them are busy and they, even if they do, they do want to meet you, they can't probably physically meet you because they have to, to go to all their other obligations but we're all there at the same time, kind of taking space for each other in advertising marketing to network and, and exchange ideas and just and energy. So that was just a great opportunity to do that. Yeah, and you talked about like full circle moments. I know also that your, your tutor for um, the 2022 class was a previous scholar in 2019. So do you feel like having had this experience this year in 2022, where do you think, um, does that help you with some future goals that you wanna build upon? Uh, I think it was great. Um, her name's Erin and it was great to see her be in that position because that being a tutor isn't something that they, they just, you know, pick any anyone because they have to also uh, pay for their pass or their uh, to accommodate them to come to the, the the festival as well. So to know that she was able to make a big enough impact to the point that they wanted to bring her back and and have her kind of impact the the rest of the upcoming class. And it was just it was great to have that representation uh, because it just made you feel more comfortable. It made you feel like you belong in the space in the room. And, and being able to talk to her, we, we would have lunch at the Inkwell Beach together and just talk about the speakers that were there, what's coming up in, in the next couple of days, just feeling a, a lot more, um, I guess, engaged in it by having someone who knows your unique experience of being at CAN. because the majority of people who were in the, I was in the Young Lions Media Academy, and uh, there are different academies, and majority of the people there are sponsored by their company. So we were pretty much the only people who weren't sponsored by our companies and were sponsored by um, the Cancer Cancer Diversity Collective. So having your tutor know what that specific experience is like, is just it just allowed it for you to not feel left out in any way. Yeah. Adrian, so you've really built something incredible here. Um, so you talked about in the beginning, you had five, now you're up to 25 people in the program. And then this year you expanded globally to four continents. How did you manage to do that? Uh, you know, a lot of prayers and great people around <laughs> to help. Um, you know, we we have a great team of people that support um, the applications go out. Uh, folks like Ottawa, amazing people um, apply to the program. Um, organizations like agencies, they want to be able to make a contribution within their own organization. We know a big thing right now is recruiting, but also retaining talent. And a part of that retention process is letting people who are high performers know that they're valued mm -hmm. and having them, giving them the opportunity to go to CAN is one of those opportunities of value that they show. So um, as Adawa mentioned, most of a good majority of the folks that applied or that were part of the process that are ambassadors and scholars program, they were sponsored by their company was it mm -hmm. the company chose but then then there's another segment of our folks that um sponsors trust us with the application process and we're able to choose and select for them and then we have you know um sponsors who want to see the list and want recommendations so they have the space and grace and flexibility to choose their own based off of what matches well with their organization. So we have a lot of flexibility in terms of opportunities for sponsors to be able to choose the right candidate to represent or they want to support. So that's always a great thing. Um, and I think, you know, what really pushes the dial and how we do it is people like Ottawa being able to talk about the experience and how it came about and how it may inspire them um, and tell folks, you know, this is what they do. And then we get an influx of these applications that come in and people saying, how do we do it? We want to get it, be a part of this. And I think the other powerful thing is too, is it gives voice to the participants who are there 
um, when they come back, they have access to CEOs and folks, you know, especially the ones who are sponsored by their companies. Mm -hmm. They're in conversations that they were never in before, that they yeah. never would have been considered for. But this opportunity to go to CAN opened up those doors and they are now able to lend their voice in a much powerful, more respected way um, than they were if they did not have this experience. It's like a badge of honor. So I'm, I'm happy to say we probably have to start adding a sticker that, you know, it's a huge experience. I'm a scholar. So. That's not well, a bad I, idea. It, it's a yeah. very good idea, actually. So I know we need to wrap up. So I guess, um, Adwa, what's next for you? I would say what's next for me would be to uh, also just take, enjoy the downtime and it's summertime. I'm, I'm in New York City, just being outside in nature and just living life, honestly. Um, but more on a professional level, uh, still nurturing my connections. I've met a good amount of people who were in my academy, also uh, people who were just professionals who were at the, the festival, um, who definitely you know, sent messages to keeping connections with. If I'm applying for a job, I've reached out to people who've put in referrals for me. Um, so just kind of doing the work, but then also allowing myself to breathe and enjoy the process. Very good. That's well-rounded because a lot of times it's just like, go, 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 go. And you're only thinking about the work, but you have to think about the full person and nurturing your body and your soul and your career. So I love that. Um, okay. So we're wrapping up, as I said. So Adrian, looking ahead a year from now, what do you um, hope to see done? Like what should folks start doing and sh what should they stop doing in that? Yeah, Don't yeah. about it, be about it. <laughs> right. I, I love that, um, you know, the, the idea of expansion and increasing the territory of what's happening at Can Lions. You know, we also host the only diversity, equity, and inclusion activation ever in the history of Can Lions, and we call it Inkwell Beach after the Martha's Vineyard Inkwell Beach. But it provides a place for people like us and underrepresented communities to come when they're at Can to network in that space and then go back into the larger festival and tackle it. You know, it is, we make it sound fun, but it's a daunting space. It's huge. You know, it's a lot of walking back and forth, finding the right session. Um, so we want to be able to keep that same energy up. You know, we want to be able to get more people to apply. We want to expand from 25 to maybe 50 people um, in 2023. We wow. want to you know, have representation. We, you know, you mentioned earlier that we had four continents represented. We want to get, you know, all of the continents. If there's anybody in Antarctica, come on in, you know, we really want you to be a part of this experience. Um, but just, you know, keep, again, keep the same energy up. We know the co topic right now is diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, but stop talking and let your PR be your practice. Whatever you say you're doing, make sure you're doing it. Um, Find some great talent. The Can Lions Diverse, Can Can Diversity Collective is a place that we have high performing talent like people like Ottawa. I'll make sure that I include you and be a sponsor and talk about you when you're, you know, you're not in the room. So we'll have you in a position soon. So don't you worry about that. But um, that's the plan. You know, we want to expand the territory of the Can Can Diversity Collective. We want Inkwell Beach to be, you know, a space where folks can grow, continue to network, find that diverse talent that they're looking for. Um, and we're just in it for the long haul. Thank you. That was awesome. People apply. I'm sorry, apply. We're going to have applications out um, in fourth quarter coming up. Um, okay. And we're looking for additional sponsors. So people, please sponsor. Find a young person that you want to send. We'll have applications and sponsorship opportunities available soon. So please find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you want to find us. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for joining. <laughs> Thanks for being a part of this conversation. Really important. Um, inclusion is the most important thing. And I think we talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, but the inclusion piece is the piece that I think people forget a lot. So let's all continue to remember that inclusion is what we should be focused on as well. And thank you again for this program. Thanks, Adwa. Thanks, Adrian. And thank you all for watching. Okay.